Welcome to you all. Um, thank you for taking the time to join. So today's webinar is Developing and Implementing Quarterstone Nursing Documents in Cambodia. So my name is April and I am the Director of Programs at HBO and I'm gonna be moderating today's webinar. In 2021, one of HBO's sponsors, the American College of Colleges of Nursing launched the AACN Essentials which outline the necessary curriculum content and expected competencies of graduates from baccalaureate, master's, and doctor of nursing programs in the US. So this inspired a curiosity in HBO's nursing community around how similar standards have been developed and implemented in low resource countries. Which brings us to today's speakers. We have Ms. Manila Prack and Dr. Rick Hanker. And they were both key members of the technical working group of nurses in Cambodia that developed a core set of guiding standards for nursing practice in Cambodia. And these were approved ultimately by the Ministry of Health and then disseminated throughout the country. So today's webinar will explore the development of the nursing standards of practice in Cambodia, looking at how the process started, the challenges encountered, the impact of the guidelines, and then we will explore some lessons learned and how this process might be applied in other countries. And finally, what role Western volunteers can play in helping advance nursing standards of care globally. So Manila Prak, she works with the USAID Enhancing Quality of Healthcare Activity Project through FHI 360 in Cambodia and where she is the team lead of healthcare regulation and accreditation. She also works on a volunteer basis as the president of the Cambodian Association of Nurses, which is actively involved as a co-facilitator co for the ICN Leadership for Change program for Cambodian nurses. And then Rick Hanker is on faculty at the University of Pittsburgh School of Nursing and a practicing nurse anesthetist at UPMC Presbyterian Hospital. And he's been a member of HBO since 2004, currently serves on the board of directors and has been on the steering committee for nurse anesthesia, as well as a project director in Cambodia and Laos. And he received a Golden Apple Award for his work in Cambodia. And before we get started, just a few very quick housekeeping things. I know we're all probably very used to Zoom by now, but first just make sure to keep yourself muted um, during the webinar, which will really help with the background noise while they're speaking. And then we do also recommend that you select the speaker view in Zoom, which will probably be the easiest viewing experience um, as they share their slides. The webinar is going to be recorded. Uh, for those of you who registered, you will get an email uh, sometime later in the week or next week with a link to the recording, which will be on HBO's YouTube channel. And this will also be available to anyone uh, through HBO's YouTube channel, whether they registered to attend or not today. And then finally, there will be time for questions after the speaker's presentation. Uh, since we do have a big group of people, we're gonna ask that people submit their questions through the chat feature, and then I will present the questions to the speakers. So with that, I am very excited to hand over the webinar to Manila, and Rick. Thank you so much, April, and thank you to HBO for having, having me here. Good evening, good morning to all friends around the world, especially to everyone who presenting in this webinar. I am here to very pleased to share with you all what I have learned and then through my professional career, mainly in the development of the cornerstone document for Cambodian nurses by working with international volunteers and experts. I will start my presentation about Cambodia and the brief background of the cornerstone document and the nursing education. And Professor Henka will continue to talk about the engagement of the development of the nursing standard of practice with the American Nurse Association. So um, as you, most of you here know Cambodia because I recognize that some of you, uh, many of you here coming to Cambodia, I have met you here in Cambodia. So 
Cambodia actually is a small, beautiful country called Kingdom of uh, Water with lots of small and with the total landscape of uh, 181,035 square, which is uh, similar to the size of one of the uh, state of United States called Oklahoma. So actually John Knet actually teach me about how to search uh, the site of Cambodia similar to one of the state in the United States. And the total population is about 17 billion, which is uh, comprised of 97% uh, uh, practice Buddhism and with the rest of uh, us are practice uh, minority like a uh, Vietnamese, uh, Chinese, Jam and other ethnicity. And we have total of 25 province and city. And our health operation actually uh, operate through the, these 25 provinces. Our, uh, the range of the, the list of the Cambodia is uh, ranked in 71 um, in, in the world, which is uh, actually 0, 21 percent of the total world population. Next slide, please. There are five health professional council uh, responsible to practice the law and regulation for the health professional, and the five are the medical council. Pharmacist Council, Dentist Council, Nursing Council, Midway Council that established by the Royal Degree. And the Council play important role for registration, registration licensing for their health professional uh, people. And they actually responsible for the implementation and reinforcement for the Code of Ethics and the Code of Conduct and um, health professional development program for their health practitioner. The council network actually established for the regional level, uh, national level and provincial level as well. For the total of the nurses in Cambodia, this is actually not really up to that. Actually, we got uh, 225,000 nurses for now, including the uh, private nurses as well, which is around the, the patient, uh, nurse to patient ratio is 1 to 18. Together with the midwife, nurses actually uh, taking 60% to the total of a healthcare workforce in Cambodia. So this is reflect that uh, nurse and midwife play important role in primary healthcare. Uh, so sorry, in the universal health coverage for the country. And Ministry of Health actually realized that the uh, midwife and nurse play important role in uh, UAC as well. Cambodian Nursing Association established in 2013, but registered as the official with the Ministry of Interior in um, 2019. And the main role of Cambodian Association of Nurse is the CPD provider. Next slide, please. So this document, sorry, this slide actually uh, just provide you the brief nursing document, nursing cornerstone document, not all the nursing cornerstone document in Cambodia, but some of the nursing cornerstone document with uh, which I, Dr. Virya and Professor Richard Hanker have involved in the development of, of them. The first one is the nursing and delivery free protocol, as you can see in this one. And the second one is the nursing process. The third one is the code of ethics for nurse. The fourth one, the nursing standard of practice, the first edition, which I would call because now we got the second edition. And we will talk more uh, on number four shortly. 
Number five is the royal degree or uh, some of the translation called royal code, royal code or law or regulation of health practitioner. And number six is the continuing professional development guideline. Uh, number seven, the scope of practice wonders as the products. And this one actually uh, developed based on number four document. And then number eight is the standard of practice wonders guideline. With these two document is very new. Uh, now it's in the process of uh, submitting these two document to the Ministry of Health for the endorsement. Next slide, please. So I would talk, start to talk about the development of the nursing standard of practice, the first edition, 2015, that leading the development by the Ministry of Health and Kapodil Council of Nurses. Next slide, please. This is the introduction of the nursing standard of practice will be uh, taken from American Nurse Association 2014. So I won't read uh, this definition for you as you can read this, this definition. So actually this definition starting to absorb to me since um, 2013 when Professor Richard Hunter coming to Uncle Hospital, Uncle Hospital for Children for his volunteer. And then we, at that time, actually we start to approach him by working on the code of ethics for nurses. And at that time, Dr. Viria come back from ASEAN meeting and ASEAN required the Cambodia to develop the nursing standard of practice. And that is why how we approach uh, Professor Hunter to develop the nursing standard of practice for Cambodia. And the definition of the nursing standard from the literature review, uh, many literature we, we, uh, many literature review, including the document from American Nurse Association for include at that time. Next slide, please. So to answer this important question, what was the motivation to develop this set of standards? I would recall all the work that we have done from uh, 2014, 2000, end of 2013 to 2014. Actually, our uh, desire, our goal is to to the better quality of the population and the better uh, nursing profession in Cambodia. As we learned that um, because of the war, the civil wars for so many years in Cambodia, the, the nursing profession seemed to be limited compared to other countries, even the Tan ASEAN country around us. So we, we when, we, when, when, when I call me, I refer to the, usually we got to talk with, with Professor Richard Hunter. Actually, he's not, he's more than a friend, he's my mentor. So sometimes, most of the time when he come to Uncle Hospital for Children, we got to meet and discuss about whatever we can do to make the nursing profession to improve the quality of the population at Health of Cambodia. And because of that time also uh, ASEAN asking, the requirement for ASEAN as uh, need for the uh, nursing standard of practice. So it was the right time that uh, Professor Richard Hunter also at Uncle Hospital for Children at that time. And also there were no nursing standard of practice at the time as well. So to respond to the need and request from the Ministry of Health to fulfill the requirement from the ASEAN through Dr. Koiviria at that time. He was representative of the nursing division at the Ministry of Health. So this time was initiated. And also, we also think that it, it would be really good to have this document so that it can be used as the foundation for the nursing education curriculum development for the future. Next slide, please. So to link with the nursing curriculum development, I would uh, share with you the 
Reason Nursing Education Program in Cambodia. Like uh, we have this five nursing education program in Cambodia. The, the first one is the primary nurse, which is the program study from six months to one year, but, but this program has closed since 2016. I think this program actually responds to the need of the country right after my rule, that there were not many nurses, not many uh, physicians, not many healthcare professionals, not many healthcare professionals uh, were alive from the war. Many of them were killed at the war, and that is why this program was started. And uh, the second program is the associate degree honors, which have a uh, three year uh, period of time, and bachelor degree nurse for a year. And there is another program called International Program Bachelor Degree Nurse, also a four-year program, and, and this is this is in the international program, but this is available on the one university in Cambodia called University of Helen Sion. And then in 2018, there was a call from uh, University of Helen Sion need for the development of master degree for uh, nurses curriculum. I was called, I was invited to be one of the committee member to develop uh, this master program. So I was very honored to be invited to this um, curriculum committee. So this, curric this curriculum actually developed finalized and now submitted to the Ministry of Health waiting for approval and we expected that the master degree of nurse will be started in Cambodia maybe in, uh, in 2023 next year. Mm -hmm. Next slide please. So I would like to uh, hand over this uh, slide to uh, Professor Hunter. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, a pleasure to work with Manila on this and, and uh, appreciate all the support that Manila has got from many of you. Uh, and, and just great to see this presentation by her in terms of, of the impact that she's had in terms of practice standards with nursing in Cambodia. So I, I was fortunate enough to be pulled into working on the code of ethics for nurses and Manila had already worked on this great deal. And um, uh, I know uh, uh, March of 2013, we started this workshop, but we'd gone ahead and Manila had said, Rick, I'm trying to get this passed. Can you help me with just some presentation in terms of getting this passed with the Ministry of Health? And we worked on that in uh, late 2012. And then she asked if I would help with the Code of Ethics for Nurses Workshop. And, and I brought one of my colleagues, uh, uh, Heidi Donovan along, and we did a workshop at uh, uh, CM Reed Provincial Hospital on Code of Ethics for Nurses. At that time, we also met with Virya Poy, and uh, uh, Dr. Poy uh, had talked about, you know, and we talked about the practice standards, and it worked well for me because at that time I was uh, on the American Nurses Association uh, Practice Standards uh, Committee for Nursing, and uh, I served an eight-year term on that, and it, it worked out very well. Uh, so, uh, and then I also had, uh, starting in August of 2013, had a sabbatical at the University of Pittsburgh. So I was able to go to Cambodia in August 2013, start to work with uh, uh, Dr. Coy and, and uh, uh, Ms. Pra Mrs. Prack and, or in Manila, and start to develop this. And then... 2013 November again back in Cambodia working with them we met with the Secretary of State for the Ministry of Health uh, His Excellency uh, Professor Pierre Croy and then again met with him in, in March and we continued to work on this and then uh, August 2014 uh, World Health Organization sponsored a meeting and this is a grassroots meeting with all the leadership from uh, in nursing around Cambodia we met at Anchor Hospital for Children and we had put together a draft of the practice standards and we'd asked that group, please provide us feedback in terms of what you think about this, uh, these practice standards. 
And uh, so we've revised based upon much of the feedback that they gave us in August of 2014. Uh, December 2014, the uh, Ministry of Health approved uh, the practice standards that we had put together. So uh, and you can see the, the picture on the left down below is one of the meetings where they were going ahead and working on uh, the approval of those practice standards. So, and then up above on the left, also the picture where it was announced the approval of those practice standards. So I could have the next slide. And uh, the American Nurses Association, the, the framework was used, but what we tried to make sure that we did is um, uh, made sure that the competencies of each of these practice standards was appropriate for Cambodia. So we discussed that a great deal. And there's a picture down below on the left of the meeting that we had at Anchor Hospital for Children, where we spent two days discussing, you know, what should be included in terms of competencies for these standards, and spent a lot of time working on that piece. So we had standards of practice, and then we had standards of professional performance, similar to the American Nurses Association. So uh, this is what we had worked on during one of the pieces that we worked on during that that uh, meeting at Anchor Hospital for Children. If I could have the Next slide, please. So what really worked out well is um, I invited, uh, and Carol Bickford was the uh, American Nurses Association uh, staff person, and she was uh, leading this practice standards group. And I asked her if it was OK if, if Manila and uh, Viria joined our group. And talked to, we talked to them a little bit. And uh, on a number of occasions, they joined our practice standards committee meeting and talked about some of the issues and asked some questions. And, and it worked out incredibly well to have them join that American Nurses Association meeting. Uh, and then, of course, they used the ANA uh, uh, framework for developing some of those standards. And then uh, we actually presented uh, the uh, standards and some of the competencies in the process at the um, uh, International Council of Nursing meeting in Singapore in 2015, and, and uh, Dr. Bickford was was also there to help support uh, that presentation. So, if I could have the next slide, please. This just shows you the a little bit more in terms of the framework that we use. There's primary nurses diploma and bachelor's prepared nurses in Cambodia at that time. And we didn't know if we should include master's nurses. And, and the next version of this uh, will include master's prepared nurses. And there's even some discussion about, you know, should we have competencies and standards and should we include uh, doctor level? So, um, uh, but this was what we did at the time. So we would build on the primary nurse and the diploma would be in addition. So similar to the, the competencies for each of the standards that we used. Uh, for the uh, American Nurses Association Scope and Standards of Practice. So if I could have the next slide. And then this is just, um, I, again, the professional standards that we had and we had ethics, and these are some of the things that we included. Uh, so use of the code of ethics for nurses. And, and what was great is that we had a code of ethics for nurses in, in Cambodia at that time. So again, this is, uh, competencies that we put in for that ethics standard. And if I could have the uh, next slide. So again, just to, before we start uh, with questions, uh, wonderful to work with people in Cambodia, with uh, Manila, with uh, His Excellency Professor Thier Croy, and uh, he met with us on a number of occasions and and really stimulated some thinking and really was an advocate for going ahead and, and uh, moving forward those uh, uh, those standards and appreciate that. And we, we really enjoyed uh, uh, the work that he did in supporting us. So again, a, a pleasure to work with uh, Manila and uh, uh, on this project. Thank you guys, that was wonderful. It's uh, a lot of work that went into this uh, over a, a long stretch of time. So it's, it's truly impressive and it, it's clear you guys had a, a great team working with you and a lot of support um, along the way. And I think, you know, I'm sure there are lots of questions that, that people have, but I think 
a really interesting thing to hear from both of you guys, um, you know, might be the next step in looking at kind of the, the outcomes. So have there, have there been any observed or documented outcomes or impacts from these guidelines that, that you have developed? I, I know you're still actively in the implementation phase, but what are some of the, um, the impacts you guys have seen? Can you please state your question again? Sure. I, I was asking about what some of the impacts of the guidelines have been. Um, thank you so much, April, for your question. And actually, before I answer this question, before I forgot, actually, I'm so um, happy to see most of the people I know here. And I know that um, some of the people here actually support me for my education from bachelor degree to my master degree. And I am here today having speak to you all today, today actually from all of your support, the hard work um, and everything. So thank you so much. So this, this standard the, the development of the nursing standard of practice to me at the 2000, actually I think we started end of, it's around end of 2013, beginning of 2014 at that time, it's, it's unplanned to me and I didn't know that it's bring me so much it's influenced me so much on my career path because of the development of uh, the nursing standard of practice actually helped me to understand a, a great deal on the why nurses need the nursing standard of practice why this document is important but uh, when, you know, my experience from the clinical nurse understand that patient bedside is the most important. I don't need to understand or to learn more about policy paper or uh, document policy at the high level. Or I don't need to know something about that. But this is teach me a great deal. And it's, it's, it's teach me learning by doing it's guide me to my uh, academic it's drive me to to continue my education it's helped me to get another job and it's i have learned that even uh, nursing profession have limitation in ability to develop the nursing uh, cornerstone document or other document, but we have used this document so much for our study, for our paper, like a research or short project, or even to develop a, like a short project at the hospital or, or short course study or continue bachelor degree or master degree or even use as a reference guideline to develop other document. So this document actually used as the reference to develop another nursing standard of practice 2022. Use a lot of reference from this document. And that, again, this document integrated into the Cambodian Hospital Accreditation Standard, which I am responsible for, for now. So, the standard actually integrate into the patient care standard, which indicate in the group six among 11 group of the Cambodian hospital accreditation standard that just started in Cambodia in 2020. And we are now prepare uh, the hospital, all of the government hospital and some of the private hospital to meet the hospital accreditation standard. So I am so excited 
excited about project. Not so much about the standard, but excited that actually the Cambodian people will receive the quality of care, same as the other country, at least the ASEAN country. I, I, I am hoping that I answered your question, April. Yeah, no, that was great. Go ahead, Rick. I was going to say one of the other things that we're doing with the standards is, um, you know, Viri Akoi, uh, uh, Dr. Viri Akoi has been working with us uh, since we worked on the standards and, and he's interested in doing some work in terms of measuring how can we go ahead and measure how nurses might use the standards and, and what we're doing. I actually have a, a DMP student working with Dr. Koi and myself to do almost a, a, it's kind of a virtual simulation piece where we're going ahead and trying to look at some knowledge, skills, and, and confidence related to some scenarios and doing that uh, a pre and then doing some uh, simulation scenario online and then some debriefing and then doing the knowledge, skills, and, and confidence after. And uh, seeing if that's a way that we can actually try to measure some of those competencies and, and see if we could roll that out and do that with many of the nurses in Cambodia. So we're trying this as a pilot back in the US, University of Pittsburgh, and then we're gonna work on translating this into Khmer and then see if we can go ahead and roll this out as a way to actually look at how can we measure you know these competencies in nurses in Cambodia. And, and eventually, and, and actually uh, been working with Viri on this uh, quite a bit the last couple of weeks, trying to see, you know, is this some way that we can look at quality of care? And the big push that we have right now, and, and this is related to some of the work Manila is doing, but there's really a push for quality improvement in uh, measures of quality in Cambodia hospitals. And we'd like to go ahead and start doing continuous quality improvement, obviously, and then see if something like this simulation and, and can give us some sort of indicator of what's going on with these nursing competencies and how does it relate to quality overall in the hospital? So that's that's some of the additional work that we're we're doing with this. So lots of projects related to this. Yeah, no, it's it's clear there's no shortage of work for you guys to continue to expand on these. And the research is exciting because that's a nice stepping stone and bridge to um, sharing this even more largely in the global nursing community for others to see sort of the evidence base for the implementation of these guidelines and how they're being used and how it's improving quality of care. Um, that'll be huge. And, you know, a related question from Jean Leffers that just came in was, um, she was hoping you guys could elaborate a bit on how you tailored the Cambodian guidelines um, to fit the Cambodian culture. So taking the um, American Nursing Association guidelines and then what that process was to adapt them to the local culture. Thank you for the question. So, um, actually, the when we discussed through the American Nursing Association framework, the nursing standard of practice from American Nurse Association, we are not just adapting the framework from United States, which is so different from Cambodia, and then we just numbs and adapt adapted without any reason. We see the, the, the content of the, the, the framework. So we, I was surprised to see that, you know, at that time, I, I, I remember that I surprised to see that the framework from American Nurse Association include the nursing process framework from the Ministry of Health from Cambodia. So we have the nursing framework that we developed and approved by Ministry of Health in 2012. You can see in the in my slide. So I was happy and, and think that Cambodia has something uh, related to United States at that time because the framework of the standard also include the our nursing process framework there. So why can we uh, using this framework to develop the standard? That's number one. And then in my uh, thesis pro proposal, when I studied at Chulalongkorn University in Thailand, I was developed the neonatal nursing standard of practice using the same format, the same framework, because 
it's fit because it's still nothing process. It fit even in Thailand. It's easy to communicate to my professor and even to nurses in Thailand because everyone well known and famous about the nursing process. Very nursing process is very practical, and everyone just just agree. Why don't you go ahead and use it? So it's 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 easy to relate that that I can say that this is one of the the advantages that um, of the nursing standard of practice that include the nursing framework there and. I remember that Eric, I do not remember how many standard originally from the American Nurse Association, but I remember that we only uh, hope 14 standard that which is really uh, relevant to Cambodia, which is the thing it is practical in Cambodia. And, and uh, that's depend on the discussion from the, the, the people that we invite from uh, the grassroots discussion and, and that's how we we can say that the the document uh, is very practical to use based on on that yeah so i i would say that we we cut back on many of the professional standards that just didn't seem to fit where uh nursing practice was at that time in cambodia and we tried to really make sure that that it fit well, and uh, but we had some some very interesting uh, discussions, and I think I saw Kyoko uh, Koto on on this call, and Kyoko was actually at that meeting where we had these discussions and this this gut grassroots discussion about what should actually be uh, in uh, those competencies, what uh, what is appropriate for, and I know we always discuss well. We, and we, when we developed the competencies, we thought, okay, let's try to move nursing forward a little bit with the competencies, but not make the competencies at such a high level that they're not attainable by the nurses in Cambodia. So we tried to put them just a little bit above where to make the nursing profession hopefully push a little bit, but not to the point where they're not attainable. And that was, that was key when we had that discussion uh, at Anchor Hospital for Ch Children in terms of where we put the level for those conferences. Great, great. And, and related, I think Barbara Kelly um, had a question about um, were the nursing standards and guidelines developed by nurses? So looking at the team you guys had, was it primarily nurses um, or a mix of healthcare providers? The, the group that we had uh, and and Virian Manila and I, of course, had done a lot of the upfront work, but then the group that was at Anchor Hospital for Children were all nurse leaders. So they were leaders in different hospitals, but they were nurses uh, at many of the different hospitals. Is that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, how many bachelor's and master's programs are there now in Cambodia? How many bachelor's and master's? programs in Cambodia? How many, like how, how many, how how many, many, how many the, the number? So there's one government, University of Health oh. Sciences, it's one bachelor's program with government. Okay. There's four associate programs mm -hmm. with the government. Yeah. Um, UHS is the only master's program no, that not has, yet, not, not, has yet. not started yet. Not, not yeah. And then there's there's uh, one private bachelor's program in CM Reap, mm -hmm. and then maybe what four or five yeah. uh, private mm -hmm. bachelor's programs in Phnom Penh. Yes. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And their their uh, Ministry of Health is over the government programs, and then Ministry of Education and Ministry of Health are over the private mm -hmm. programs. Yeah. So it's, and then there's one Department of Defense uh, nursing program that is, is military. Yeah, it's a military program. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm just going to read another comment and question um, from Jean because it's a comment for you guys as well as a question instead of summarizing. Um, so she said a further question relates to the mission of HBO that 
partners help professionals to meet the express needs of host partners. So this project could not have been so successful without having a talented leader like Manila or a partner such as Rick with his experience in nursing leadership in the US to collaborate to see this succeed. So what lessons can you share for program directors in particular um, in helping match HVO nursing volunteers with program needs? So I think this relates to discussions, Manila and Rick, that we had about, in your mind, each of you, what is your idea of the appropriate role of a volunteer um, to help facilitate the discussion of standards in a different country and to help move that process forward? So I think it would be great to hear each of, from each of you about what your idea about the role of a, of a volunteer and, and how programs like HBO can help support the development of nursing standards in other countries. You go, Sarah. Okay. So I, I think um, uh, what's, what's key is, and Manila and I have been talking about this a little bit, uh, uh, and I think we've met like three times uh, just to, to make sure we're uh, prepared for this. And we talked about this question and what, what seems to have worked. And I think what's key is, you know, the volunteer going in and realizing that, um, you know, you have to look at everything in terms of, of the context, in terms of what's going on in that particular country. And even though I've been coming to Cambodia since 2005, do I still feel like I am knowledgeable about the context of the country? Not, not so much. Um, I still will go ahead and, and bring ideas to Manila and say, well, what do you think? And uh, of course, she has the expertise in terms of knowing the history of the country, knowing nursing incredibly well, knowing the Ministry of Health. And I can provide things to her, but she's really the one that takes those things and decides what is appropriate for Cambodia and what is not appropriate for Cambodia. And what's phenomenal from my perspective at this point is seeing what we've done. And many of you have been involved in this in terms of helping with, uh, you know, the development of Manila in terms of Chula Long Khan and, and uh, fostering her. And now she's, you know, a very strong woman working on accreditation in uh, Cambodia. And it's, it's the perfect time. She's at the perfect place at the perfect time. And her background has really helped in terms of saying, this is what they need. Hospital accreditation, how perfect to have a, uh, you know, a strong nurse working on hospital accreditation, taking standards of practice and implementing it. And I think many of us have worked on, on working with Manila and providing that support. And I think uh, what's, what's wonderful with HBO is seeing kind of the product of much of what we've done uh, in terms of, of working with Manila and getting to this point, not only for her personal development, but also looking at, look at what's happening in terms of what's going on in terms of Cambodia. And now they have hospital accreditation uh, and the implementation of standards of practice right in the hospital accreditation. What a wonderful thing. Anyway, I'm sorry, I talked too much. Like I said, so I, I would share the experience that, um, you know, Cambodia have um, limited in, in expertise. So for example, if we, we wanted to develop the Cambodian hospital accreditation standard, we don't have expert in hospital accreditation standard in Cambodia. No one in Cambodia or no Cambodian people as an expert of, in this field. This is just one example. So many other fields that we have no expert and that is where we need volunteers. But, but the, the, the volunteer that has the expertise is, is not enough. The volunteer that, that is sensitive to the culture, volunteer that has the that is despite, you know, the volunteer who come to Cambodia want to help, but it would be helpful if volunteer 
understand the culture, understand the context, value the people, and listen to the owner of the country, listen to the difficulty of the people here, and, and just don't ignore it. So I can see that, you know, working through Uncle Hospital for Children, when I work with the volunteer, and right now I work with the USAID project, work with what we call expert. These are expatriate, are people from outside of the country who bring their expertise coming to Cambodia. They are the same. If they listen to the people, if they sensitive enough to the culture, if they learn about the politics of the country, they will be very successful. They would be earn a lot of respect. They would be, be also not just coming here and go back, not just the, the output, the document that they produce, but they will, their reputation also remain in Cambodia. Moreover, they will be produce people like me. I am actually, here today, the ability that I can talk with you today, most the, the big big the part is from volunteer, from most of you here, from Professor Hunter here. So contribute to my successful in my career path today. So I would suggest to to you all that. Please bring your expertise to Cambodia, but also listen to us, hear us, and I think people people don't want to be bad. It it, it doesn't mean that uh, we are Cambodia and we are bad. Sometimes, sometimes I, I face this in when I was studying outside of Cambodia and because I'm, I'm Cambodian and then people judge me that I am this and that, but actually it's not. If, if people instead of criticize or paint people into color, but instead of that you motivate people, you see the value in people, you, will, you will develop that people. That's just my uh, personal opinion. Thank you. Thank you both. Those are very wise and inspirational, I think, um, thoughts that are important for an organization like HBO and volunteers who, they're, they all have wonderful intentions and motivations and, you know, they're inspired to work with HBO and to work with colleagues like Manila to advance nursing um, globally. But it is important to stay grounded in those foundations of just cultural humility and openness. And, you know, you are there to support the process, not necessarily lead it. Um, and I think you guys are just a phenomenal example of how successful that type of partnership can be if it's executed appropriately. I mean, it's, it's amazing what you guys have done. Um, and I think we did have a question come in that we're looking at um, what would you guys say was the biggest challenge you had? So this has been a long road, a long journey. I'm sure there were lots of challenges, but is there anything that stands out in your mind as one of the biggest obstacles you had to overcome? What are the obstacles? The obstacle. <laughs> the obstacle working with volunteer or the obstacle that moving forward of the document. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, for moving the documents forward, for developing a standard of nursing care in Cambodia. <laughs> the big question. Some, uh, maybe not so much with it, but uh, to, to be honest, sometimes as a woman and as a nurse, sometimes it's quite difficult to move document to the high level. You know, I, I think uh, Manila has um, gone ahead and, and uh, amazingly put together a strategy to 
move this document forward. And we were talking about it beforehand and she's got the document. She was, she, she was telling me, you know, Rick, this document uh, has approval from the Minister of Health, which is actually a very high level. And I think what, what I look at this is, um, Manila would always be talking to me about some of the problems in terms of moving this forward. And then all of a sudden we would have some gains. And, and I think what I found is that Manila was just incredibly persistent in terms of moving this forward. So I think, you know, certainly there's always going to be barriers and I think never give up. And there are some things that we had to uh, go ahead and uh, negotiate and we had to go ahead and change, you know, our thoughts in terms of, okay, this, we really like this piece, but it's not going to pass. So we negotiate different pieces, but we got, we got it and Manila got it passed. And what we always expected is we always expected that there would be changes and there would be the next version. And we said five years, there should be another version of standards of practice. And it's great that now we've got another version that's coming up that Manila has been involved in and they've built on what we did previously. So are there always barriers? Always barriers, but I think never give up, be persistent. And Manila, Manila is a good example of being persistent. And I think what we found is you never know where your successes are gonna come in terms of this. And I think the successes come with uh, what Manila has done with accreditation and then also what Viri is doing with this document. So we're trying to make it more of a, a doc, uh, document that is being actively used. Yes, actually the most challenging is the, to moving the document to the high, higher level to the endorsement of the document. And this is actually uh, it's a long process in any document, in any circumstance, in any time, anywhere. But uh, we can do it and we can do it as a team. And um, and this is, you know, I have realized that there is no school teach you how to move in the document and how to proceed through, you know, one step to another step, like uh, we learn in the research, like uh, what, what we call in research, uh, perceptual framework, like we have the, the picture that draw the line for us, there is no school teach you to do that. And we have to learn through our experience. We have to, and by that, we have to com communicate effect effectively. And I have learned actually from the uh, global nursing leadership from um, International Council of Nurse, a great deal about uh, policy and politics in nursing, how you should talk or how you should approach with the uh, politician or the high level of people and things like that and and it's it's become a lot more like i rely that it's not just me or it's it's not just a body everywhere facing this problem and we just need to be uh do not give it up and we just keep it up and uh improve our communication skill, interpersonal skill, and making a good connection with people around us. And this would be achieved. It's not easy, never easy. Yeah, no, I, uh, for sure. And I think your, your message, both of you of patience and persistence is, is key. And, and I think what you just said, Manila, is also important for other volunteers to think about that may assist in other countries that um, it's not unique to Cambodia or low resource countries or any environment that this is just a long and difficult process. Um, I would imagine even in the US and, and many countries, if you're trying to implement um, something like standards of care for nursing, there are just there's a lot of steps and a lot of obstacles and a long process to go through. And so I think it's important for volunteers as well that not to be discouraged or think that that's unique to this experience, that that's experienced widely, um, I would imagine. So uh, yeah. go ahead, Rick. If I could just make one comment, you know, the with the American Nurses Association, we don't have to implement those into the government in the United States in terms of practice. Whereas what we did is we're taking standards of practice and we're implementing them into the 
you know, the regulations in the Ministry of Health, which is actually one step further than what we do at the American Nurses Association. So mm -hmm. it's like, what an incredible thing that we're actually taking those standards of practice and we're saying, yeah, they're part of the regulations with the Ministry of Health. And, and that's a real, that's a real plus. So we almost took it further than we do in the U.S. and attribute again to um, Manila's persistence with colleagues such as Mary Poy and, and some of our other colleagues here in Cambodia that pushed those forward. And uh, uh, His Excellency Professor Thierry Croy. So he also helped in terms of pushing these forward. Yeah, for the nursing standard of practice, because the Dr. Viriyakoy is at the Ministry of Health anyway, so the process is um, is faster than other documents. And to me, I think people want to help. Actually, if we communicate our purpose uh, right to them, and we 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 really express the how can I say we create the sun or agency from us to them that. Uh, what our purpose is, I think everyone wants to help. If we got a chance to meet the, the right people, then mm -hmm. it will be successful. Mm -hmm. It's just a long process and you, we need to be very patient. Very, very patient. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm very thankful that you guys were so patient and that you've seen this all the way through to, to passing by the Ministry of Health and you're in the implementation phase. So that, that's very exciting. And we're coming up on time now. So I, I know that a lot of people have to go. Um, but to let you guys know, there is lots of praise and thank you and uh, compliments to you guys coming through the chat and uh, you know some comments that you guys definitely need to try to get more of this in the literature try to get some, some of your process and implementation published. And um, oh, I will read this. We have a comment from a nurse in, in Myanmar who's residing in the US as a nurse um, and just became an HBO member and comments, this project is a great example uh, for other Southeast Asian developing countries and that I am so excited in seeing the progress and appreciate your efforts and definitely gonna take this example and experiences. So. The work you guys have done, I think, is phenomenal and definitely provides a strong foundation for others to learn from and try to adapt in different countries and different environments. So thank you both for your time today and for all of the work you have done. Um, I'll open it to you guys if you have any parting comments, but I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It was a great example and great start to a, a nursing education webinar that can be archived and shared with other other organizations, other potential volunteers. Thanks so much. Yeah. Any last words, Manila? No, I'm just so happy to see you all here. I do not expect that I see most of you I know and most of you support my education again and again. I'm so thankful and grateful. I am here today because all of you thank so much. I'm, I'm just absolutely <laughs> thrilled to be able to make it to see him reap and uh, be here for some time. And, and uh, you know, I'm looking forward to, you know, you just assume that, oh, I can go ahead and do international travel and it just all of a sudden it stopped. But it's, it's great to be here and great to be working again, uh, you know, with Manila and at Anchor Hospital for Children. So, uh, well, thank you both so much. I, I look forward, I'm sure, with everyone else here to seeing um, the future of these guidelines and some of these other projects you're working on, see where they land and um, see how far this, this goes. So it's really exciting. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much.